<laughs> Are you guys ready? You got uh, costumes ready for any parties this weekend? This this is the weekend, right? A absolutely. It is. Are you I was going to. I would like to see that. Can I pull that. it off? Yes. There you go. Yeah, you can pull Get it off. Get a blonde right. wig, Jim. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yes. we'll leave you guys to plan your costumes. We'll oh. keep it going. See you guys. Have fun. And here's a look at what's happening today. From First presented by Etna. The mid-morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. Right, and the Weather Channel has you covered, of course, from coast to coast. We are, you know, saying goodbye to one winter storm, but there's more winter weather on its wake. Right? It's, it's almost like a two-part storm. Yeah, you know. So we've got that going on. Today's big deal, kind of like a broke of a band-aid. You know, do you like rip it off or do you like peel it very slowly? And that's kind of how it's happening with this front because we are going to be finding it's slow to move in, uh, but it's going to bring a lot with it. So rain is what we're watching here. It looks to spook some early Halloween plans in the Midwest. We are headed to downtown St. Louis. I am standing in Keener Plaza where the overcast skies are building around the city, but things are going to be changing and conditions will, will clear out in time for Halloween. However, we're going to have to get through the rain and the storms first. Scenes like this comes in, plus all the temperature changes that's going to come with all of this as well. So huge changes coming to St. Louis, both in terms of dropping temperatures as well as the rain coming in. Now it's going to take a little time to get here. I mentioned that kind of slowness that's happening with how this front is moving through. Greg was showing you from different satellite and radar perspectives where the front is. I'm going to look at the water vapor to show you this, where you know, we've got a lot of the moisture actually hanging back behind the front, and that's the case up there through Iowa, um, down stretching into Kansas and northern Missouri. So St. Louis, we're still in the dry air, at least at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. It's going to take a little time for this to all get in here today. So for now, we're doing good in St. Louis. We've got a few showers out there that actually stretch up through the Great Lakes. Pretty spotty for now, but with this front and the fact that the moisture out ahead of it is just going to keep on coming in and not without a quick moving front, you're going to be dealing with these kind of conditions. That's us in St. Louis. We continue to stay on it's kind of the, the murky side with the chance of rain coming in for the next couple of days. It may add up to about one to two inches of rain. I was looking elsewhere across uh, Missouri, like around Kansas City and around Olathe and Pleasant Hill. We picked up about a month or a month and a half worth of rain in about 36 hours. So that's the kind of moisture that we're dealing with here across now the central and the eastern part of the state. We could get some rain that heavy at times. First comes in Friday, then again is Saturday, later Saturday into Sunday. Keep in mind this for all of your Saturday evening plans. It's still raining on Sunday morning, and now we're going to get that front really coming through here into St. Louis and bring us a big change in temperatures as we get to the second part of the weekend. Now, looking at this front, watching it move east, it takes all weekend to do so. Great news if you're underneath high pressure and enjoying the weather here in the east, but it will be bringing in some big changes come early next week. A couple of showers are out there. I mean, the front itself is going to be making some progress. It's going to bring some shower chances, some clouds, but here comes the big stuff coming in later on Sunday into Monday. Now we get into the heavier rainfall potential, maybe even some snow on the backside of all of this here, watching especially up at elevations into northern Vermont, New Hampshire, northern Maine, and we've got that forecast looking ahead. This is through Monday, and a lot of this happening Sunday into Monday here in the northeast when you get into the heavier precip, the bigger rainfall totals, and of course the cold air coming in with the snow up there in the northeast. So to give you, to sum it up, Buffalo, we go from Midwest to Northeast. Buffalo, beautiful today. It's going to be 70. Enjoy it because then we get into the rain and the colder temperatures by Sunday only in the 40s, Greg. You know, we have another round of snow. This front, behind the front, you get into the rain, you get into the, the dropping temperatures. Kansas City is a good example of how this is going to happen. So everyone here is going to be dealing with the front, which is everyone pretty much in the Midwest, to the Southern Plains, to the Southeast, to the Northeast. Kansas City today, the front is coming through right now. You are having a fro pa or frontal passage. You had your morning high temperature. Your high temperature for the day happened earlier today. We were, uh, were going to see temperatures dropping all day long, now into the 40s and continuing 46, maybe even a degree lower here. That's it for today. Winds gusting 20 to 25 miles per hour, making it feel even colder than this. It's a northwest wind. So as soon as that wind changed direction, everything changed for you. And that's going to be happening today across parts of Kansas into Missouri. Now, it is a slow-moving front like we talked about. So St. Louis, you're not going to get it today. We'll stay warm. But we're going to see this front moving in. And in places like around Columbia, Missouri, get ready. The front is going to be coming through later today. Your temperatures will be falling. But meantime, we're not even thinking about 
out of front and across the east, we've got so many locations thinking about record warm temperatures here. You've got that fall, that warm fall feeling out there, almost feeling summer-like in Jackson, Mississippi, 87. How about 91 in Brownsville? 81 in D.C. In Boston, we may hit 80 again today. It's possible. Uh, you know, that that's uh, rare air for this time of year. Newark, New Jersey, 79 degrees. Not quite a record, but we will be close. Toledo, Ohio, that would break a record. Um, around Philadelphia, close to a record. Same thing in Baltimore, just within a degree. So warm temperatures continue today and tomorrow, maybe even a few degrees warmer. D.C., we're going to the mid-80s. Look at Raleigh, look at Atlanta, all the way down through Florida. Temps are going to be warm. Again, this front is so slow to move, it just doesn't get here yet. So you have another day with record high temperatures tomorrow into the northeast and parts of the southeast as well. If you like the warm weather, this is your time. Don't let these hours and days pass you by, Greg. Because for, you know, for some of us, they might be our warmest days till March. We'll see. I hate to say it that way. Yeah, but, you know. it's certainly the farther north you the go. The farther north you go. I'm thinking New England. and yeah. That's true. But the yeah. farther southeast, I think we'll be back here time. again. Yeah. yeah, we have some time again. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Well, hurricane season. Time in the northeast. And uh, the colors are spectacular. Especially this time of year, we didn't get some snow on the higher elevations as well. Right. And that's key. I think the weather makes the aesthetic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just in Oregon last week, you know, or two weeks ago for the uh, eclipse. And I thought Oregon did fall pretty nice. Yeah. You had the aspens and you had the green evergreens and... Beautiful. Great time to go. All right. Enjoy well, it. keep the picture topics for you. We're also mm -hmm. getting you ready for all of your weekend plans. And for next week, Halloween is on Tuesday. So let's get that forecast. Now, you're going to plan your costumes accordingly. We've got a look at big changes coming in next week compared to this past week. Temperatures much cooler. A lot of dry times, though, too, and you'll see that across the Mountain West. No snow for you this time. Denver, it's going to be drier, but much cooler. And maybe a few showery spots where an umbrella might be handy for you, like around the Mid-Atlantic. So that's your forecast for the daytime. A lot of folks, uh, a lot of kids out there doing the parades at school. We have your Tuesday evening forecast, and not a lot will have changed other than the temperatures dropping and the fact that we'll have a little more rain expanding here through the Mid-Atlantic. So again, some kind of costume with an umbrella would make sense. Here is your forecast into the Midwest, and we've got uh, for you in Chicago, temps in the 30s. Not too untypical, I guess, for a Halloween here. That happens for us to be on the cooler side. It's running a little below average. Minneapolis, we're going to be dropping through the 30s, getting below freezing through the evening, so a costume with layers would make sense. I looked up in, uh, in Minneapolis or Minnesota, the top costume for the state is fairy, which is actually one of the top 10 costumes this year. Uh, and so, uh, same thing in Missouri, fairies. In Frankenstein, Missouri, maybe you're not dressing up as Frankenstein, um, but again, Again, something with layers would make sense as temperatures drop through the 30s to near freezing as you're out doing some trick-or-treating. And last stop here in the Northeast, we do have rain coming into D.C., a witch, the most popular costume here. For Halloween, that literally you just put a sheet on and cut holes and, I you know. I think that's all that I ever was. I mean, literally. <laughs> Hence your obsession with ghosts. Yes. In fact, even I think even in recent years, that's all that I did. But I had this one that I cut. It was a fitted sheet, which was so stupid. <laughs> fitted sheets don't work. If you want to be a ghost, don't put on a fitted sheet. But I did. I had little eyes and a smile. and a, a Smile, of course. Um, and it was I a, used You it, were a friendly ghost. A friendly ghost. And I used it, I think. <laughs> A few too many years. <laughs> uh, well, if you're planning your costumes here, maybe for some weekend plans, you've got to plan for one that can take the rain. A sheet may not cut no. it. Mm -mm. So let me show you what we're dealing with rain-wise. The rain uh, is out there. For now, it's been pretty light um, this morning. Scattered in nature. That's not been the case of the past few days. We've had heavy rain. We've had thunderstorms. We've had severe weather. Texas especially has gotten a lot of that. And that happens to be where we have some instability now. There's brighter colors, the oranges and yellows here, indicating where instability is. It's still early in the day. I think I think as we get through today, we could see a few more showers out there building all across the zone out ahead of the front, and it will be raining behind the front as well. This it's that kind of front. Sometimes fronts come through and everything happens ahead of it. Uh, sometimes you get the rain that lingers behind it, and that's going to be the case with this one since we do have uh, a lot of moisture sticking around and the front itself goes stationary. Rainfall today could be heavy uh, through Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, watching across Texas yet again. Some of the same spots that just got it yesterday. So spots in central Texas getting more than three or four inches of rain all the way down through uh, San Antonio and south of there. And so, you know, some of those same zones could get more. And we'll keep it going Saturday into Sunday, lifting it up a little farther to the north. Again, remember our front kind of angling back up as it goes stationary. And then Sunday into Monday, 
back down again to Dallas. Little Rock, second day in a row, you have some heavy rain potential, so always worried about flood potential and that kind of situation. Today's forecast is for showers out there. You'll see down around perhaps Houston and College Station, some scattered showers, everything kind of lifting up through the day. Don't be surprised with a rumble of thunder. There, it's possible we get a few thunderstorms. Maybe they go severe, but most likely not. I mean, lightning would be the biggest risk and heavy rainfall with that. And we'll see as we get into your Saturday afternoon, Little Rock, Memphis, uh, Paducah, all get into some rain heavy at times right through the evening hours here. Not good timing for anyone planning those holiday parties. There's Halloween parties and then rainfall amounts coming in with one to two inches, some spots two to three and then three to five possible, kind of like what we saw yesterday as well. Uh, we're going to be watching the front move east, but as it does, it goes stationary. And so it just kind of lifts back up and allows more moisture to come back in. So more rain, as you just saw for the weekend, finally by Sunday, then we really start to see things make a move. And then behind it comes in the cold air and maybe some of the uh, changing precip type. Do we get snow and where, Greg? <laughs> Lots of play. You may remember back in 2016 when a wildfire scorched 11,000 acres or about 2% of the park. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the second wildfire in the Chimney Tops area of the Smokies. Dry conditions and high winds helped push flames into surrounding Sevier County, burning many of the trees that provide canopy for the iconic scenes of the area. Now, thankfully, burn scarred areas are slowly healing, meaning the trails to adventure are open. And our friends at More Than Just Parks got these beautiful images mm -hmm. of the fall color in all their glory. Great Smoky Mountain was designated a national park by Franklin Roosevelt in 1940 for the permanent enjoyment of the people. And I get to talk about mountains and the height of mountains. Check this out. Klingman's Dome, the highest point here at 6643, 6,643 feet. The Cherokee people met Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto in the area where the park's 150 official trails now sit. While de Soto found gold, you may find bears along with 19,000 other species of animals and plants known to make their home in this park. Well, Great Smoky Mountain National Park is the most visited national park in the country. In 2021, it had more than 14 million visitors. Number two was Zion National Park in Utah with just 5 million. And the mountains that the park and many ski resorts sit on are believed to be some of the oldest in the world. In the world, I mean, in the world, Jen, in the world. I read that a couple On times Earth. over and over again. In the world. Now, the sandstone rocks date back as far back as 800 million years ago. Ah. 800. I wasn't even alive then. <laughs> <laughs> well, this forecast, Greg, has been unbelievable for anyone planning any trips. Maybe you're thinking, I'm going to plan a trip this weekend because it's going to be so nice. Yep. Do it. Enjoy it. 80s. I mean, it'll be packed there, but everyone out enjoying the scenes because it's both perfect timing with color and temperatures for the weekend until... Until... Until it's not there anymore and it yeah. gets colder. And yeah. that's coming next week. Coming around the mountains, here we come. Yeah. We've got the rain, the cold. Temps are going to drop from the 70s on Monday to the 50s on Tuesday. And rain comes with it. That's a 30 degree drop in just a couple days. And it's going to come and it's going to feel a lot different, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's our first real cold shot for many locations here in and around uh, some of these parks in the southeast. Yeah, I mean, look, tis the season. Yeah. More unusual to get all these 80s for as long as we have here. It's right. been a nice stretch across the south. Hopefully you've been out there enjoying it. Um, we're going to keep it going here with our passport to the parks. It always keeps the adventures that are designated in 2000. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about the history about it. Yeah, so it was actually a, a national There's been uh, some drought in the region, but there's also some rain coming in as well. So how has that kind of balance affected the state's mm -hmm. tallest waterfall, A, and B, more generally, generally, how does the scene, season change the scenery overall? Cuyahoga Valley is just... It is. We also have a fascination on the show with trains, and we understand you have a train that runs through the park. What can visitors expect from that unique ride? So you have more than 100 miles of hiking trails as well at the mm -hmm. park. And how do you manage those so that people can enjoy the fall colors either walking or on horseback? And enjoy the beautiful trails at the same time. It sounds like a win-win. Um, we also mm -hmm. understand that you're ready for Halloween with a ghost walk. How spooky does that get? Wait, what? Yeah, <laughs> we got it. We got it. Come ghost on walk. out. Yeah, I'm sitting right here. Indeed, <laughs> will do. Well, Pamela Barnes, thank you so much. Pamela is the Public Information Officer for Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Thanks again for joining us. And who knew? Right next to Cleveland. We've got a national park. More importantly, we learned that ghosts are everywhere. <laughs> Did you really, you didn't know that? I didn't know There's that. There's one right here, Greg. Oh, there it is. <laughs> a friendly ghost.
<laughs> well, about Halloween, everyone wants to, to know about the forecast, and most people would prefer a colder one. We'll have to ask that question next week, but would you prefer a colder versus a warmer? If it's warm, it just doesn't feel like Halloween is what they said. I mean, we've got, depends on where you are, of course, because maybe Florida, you're always used to a warm Halloween, but maybe not, you know, this warm, like we're going to see through the next couple of days, record-breaking temperatures across the Ohio Valley, the, the Kentucky Valley, the Tennessee Valley. It's going to be warm. Temperatures heading up to record high readings. Northeast to Newark, New Jersey, we're going to 80. That's one degree away from the record high today. Toledo, we should break it clean. Cleveland will come close, Philadelphia within two degrees, and in Baltimore within one degree of the record high reading. It's it's kind of been a gift, though, in a way. I mean, it's been so nice out there. You've had nice high pressure in the southeast, beautiful sunshine, the fall colors, Nashville. We have a few more clouds today, Nashville. That'll keep our temperatures down a little bit. There may be a few showers. Don't be surprised about that. But south of there, kind of hot. Temperatures in the upper 80s today and tomorrow. Will it be too hot for all the football games. I mean, it may be not too hot for the fans, but it certainly could be for the players and sitting uh, or running out there with this kind of heat. We've got temperatures that are going to be heading up to the upper 70s in Bridgeport, Connecticut and New York City at the JFK Airport. That would be breaking a record. It would be smashing a record in Bridgeport at 77 and in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We're going to come close within a degree of uh, breaking a record. For now, we've got 204 million above average. Compare that to the 67 below. It's mainly in Montana. North Dakota, where we just got a foot of snow in spots, but that changes. And by Sunday, the cold air just kind of uh, spits out southward all the way down into the southern plains, and it does eventually sweep east as we get into Monday and into Tuesday, Greg. Well, we're going to have to revisit our question. Oh, absolutely beautiful. I wish it lasted longer than it does. Yeah. But, you know, enjoy it. And this weekend is going to be, for many of us, the great weekend to do it because it's probably the last one. Before the leaves come Before down. Before the leaves come yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can go to X and Threads to send us your comment. As much as this does. Right. I mean, think about how hard it is to move that furniture. Assembly. And all those people holding it right. in place. Yeah. And they failed. It just easily. I mean, the water yeah. just came right in. Well, welcome back, everyone. You are here with us here, and we are here with you through the mid-morning hours to get you ready for the big events in your neighborhood. Uh, I think Halloween might have something yeah. to do with that. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. And, you know, in some ways, we uh, said goodbye to one winter storm, which brought... Plenty of snow in the northern Rockies and Plains, but there's another one on its heels this weekend. Yeah, and some pretty cold weather coming in. Today's big deal sounds somewhat like a broken record for parts.